Oh, Sonny. You're letting me down. How's it going, everyone? This is Kevin. Today, I want to bring along with me to talk about my little gripe with Sony after some camera announcement that I saw by Fuji. So let's jump right into it. If you follow Fuji and you shoot Fuji, you saw that they came out with the Fuji XS20, which is the new version of this one. Now I've had the Fuji XS10 for a while and I think it's a great camera. It really packs a punch for the size of it, but it got me kind of a little bit upset with my Sony cameras because of one little thing that Fuji's doing right. With the new version of the Fuji XS10, which is the XS20, they have open gate video capabilities and it's just kind of frustrating because my Sony a7 IV, that's pretty much double the price of that camera, doesn't. This is something that is kind of getting a little bit frustrating when it comes down to having Sony cameras is that the lack of updates is just unbearable sometimes, especially when you see every other camera company bring a lower tiered camera like the Fuji XS20 that's like $1,400, have open gate 6K, um, you know, 24 frames per second, 4K 60, 10 bit color and everything like that for that price point. And when a camera like the Sony a7 IV or the Sony a7S III doesn't have open gate to even, you know, shoot for video to have the full sensor capabilities to just adjust it to however you would like to for social media purposes and repurposing your videos the way that would be nice. I've made a video about it, about the firmware updates that I wish I would get for my Sony a7 IV, my a7S III literally not long ago. And it's kind of frustrating to see that you have camera companies like Fuji always putting out firmware updates on their cameras, making sure that their newer cameras have something that the people want. And you just don't see that with Sony right now. They came out with their new CVE-1 Mark II and the only kind of different thing that they added was a wider lens and minor updates of some sort, but literally all the video specs are the same thing. And it's like, why would you want me to spend so much money on a new camera when you're not even bringing something new to the table besides, I guess, a wider lens. Great that you can do a wider lens like the 18 to 50 or whatever it is, but you're having to buy a new camera just for that is kind of wild to me. So an update of, you know, a firmware update shouldn't be that hard to do when it comes down to the cameras. I mean, we're spending quite a bit of money. I've already touched base on that in my video previously about my firmware updates, you know, wishes, but it's just kind of wild to see that a camera company like Fuji, bring out the new version of this with having open gate and everything like that and just update a camera a lot more properly than a lot of the stuff with that Sony brings. Heck, my Sony a7 IV can't even shoot uncropped 4K 60, which is wild to me. The, the 120 frames per second can only be done in 10 bit color if I shoot it in S and Q mode, but not in the regular mode, which once again, could be updated in a firmware update because clearly there's availability to be able to do that within the camera already. I just have to go through hoops and loops of everything and lose a little bit of quality when it comes on to that. So that just kind of gets me thinking, it's just like, are they really caring about what their you know purpose in the market is for their consumers? Are they really just, I don't know, making products that are catered to what the consumers want or are they just doing the Apple method where they just like, update their things just a little bit enough so that it's like, yes, it's something I wanted, but I'm not, get, not getting everything that I would want. So it's just kind of frustrating to see a camera company like Fuji, which I love, honestly, I have a Fuji X-E4 and obviously the X-S10, come out with a camera that's not tiered to be premium and you know even cinema line kind of style like how they boast about the a7s3 and heck even the a7 IV that has open gate it has really good video specs and things like that for half the cost of my sony a7 IV and basically a third of my sony a7s3 so how do we reach sony to be able to give us something like are we just supposed to just switch camera companies and call it a day, go with like, let's say Lumix or something, because at least they cater to their audience on what they want and bring something good to the table for the people whenever they kind of, you know, make it aware to them. So it's just, I don't know what's gonna happen when it comes onto the Sony effect of them not caring enough to, to provide a simple firmware update that could give us access to those things within our cameras that we spend so much money on. I mean, just looking at like the video upgrades of the Sony, or of the Fuji XS10, it just, it gives you in the in-body says like 4K 64 to 2 10-bit internal. Um, so it's just like, I, I just, 
don't know what to do with this information anymore because it's like it, there's nothing wrong with like the the new cameras there's like this one is like thirteen hundred dollars a new version of it and and a sony a7 IV is like twenty five hundred just like just kind of wild to me to, to think about i guess but i mean you can get the open gate 32 aspect at 6.2k which that's unreal i mean to me especially for a small kind of camera body itself it's just wild it's just i'm hoping that sony listens and just brings something more to the table than just a new camera that's meant for vloggers or whatever. I mean, great that you wanna to cater to vlogging people, but I don't know that many people that vlog only, but they use like their cameras maybe to do some vlogging parts of the videos like how I do, but then do a lot more than just that, I guess. But I don't know, what are, you, what are your thoughts when it comes down to that? Should Sony be able to just simply update their cameras via firmware update to give us open gate by the most minimum? maybe give us a little bit of like, I don't know, shutter angle or anything like that, how I covered in the previous video, or even like LUTs within the camera or take over to be able to do 120 frames per second, 1080p at 10 bit color within the camera itself and not through SNQ. I don't know, it's just a little bit of a rant and I thought it was just kind of baffling to me that a Fuji camera that's not considered you know, pro line can bring more specs in that aspect than you know a Sony a7 IV, which is supposed to be all pro. But that, that's just my little rant of the day. I'm hoping Sony will listen to more of us if we kind of keep bugging them about it to give us a firmware update that's actual firmware update and give us a little bit more than just what we've been getting. But with all that said and done, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure to like and subscribe, share this video, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. See ya.